what's the message, Rob, that you're driving to your division right now on the importance of second week and what they should be doing that Monday before the new dealers hit the field? Well, um, you know, listen, we do so much work in trying to recruit talent into the business weekly. We have to do a better job on onboarding them into the field. And, and I think that's the lost art as a distributor. We put so much time and resources in getting the right people into our companies. And then that first day in the field, if it's not done properly and it's not done correctly, we're going to lose them within 24 hours. My model is pretty simple. How do we keep people 24 more hours, 24 more hours, right? So everything we do today is going to matter. So with the, I think the key to a distributorship and retention, right, is what are you doing on that Monday before you onboard them to their first day in the field, right? So what I think is important, I know there's two different types of second week orientations out there. Um, listen, I'm okay with either one. I'm okay with the full day orientation, give them credit for demos towards a guarantee, or just do where the distributor is in at 8.30 in the morning, uh, starts their morning, well, at 8.30, they're with their new recruits going over pay, questions, uh, what to expect that day in the field, et cetera, right? And then certainly going over probably some of the kill tests and answering some questions that maybe came up over the weekend. I think it's crucial that the distributor's involved with that more so than the recruiter or a sales manager or a general manager, quote unquote. It's so important that the distributor is a part of that because that's the person that signs the checks. And ultimately that's the person that should care the most about the retention. And then uh, once the morning meeting starts, continue that, that orientation before you assign them to a van or a dealer counselor. Uh, at least they know what to expect. The other thing I think, um, because it's not being done, I think a lot of questions are coming up from the new recruits, Dan, uh, that are in the field by people that are not equipped to handle those questions, right? That team leader, right, that is trying to sell 30 for the first time, right? Or maybe get 50, or there's, you know, some jocularity going out there on the van and, and a new kid might ask a question like, well, what time do we get off? How much do we get paid? How do I get paid, right? They're not equipped to answer these questions. So we really want the distributor to handle them. And to me, you know, the only way to scale your business is through the retention of the people. And we got to show them we care. I'm a firm believer that the distributor has got to be involved in the orientation process. Uh, in the training process on that Thursday, they should be pulling individuals out one at a time just to get to know them, to just sit down and have a belly to belly talk with them for five minutes. And if it lasts 10 minutes, it lasts 10 minutes, right? So that's the first step. And then the, the second week orientation, again, it doesn't have to be all day, but we have to give them a good experience of what to expect rather than leave it uh, to our manager, managers, whether it's dealer, counselor, team leader, what, whatever you have going on in your distributorship. It's just crucial that uh, they hear it from the horse's mouth. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when Rob says scaling your organization, uh, a scaling is to increase income, right? Who, who, who would not want to increase income? We, we've, as distributors and distributor trainees, at some point you invested in advertising, whether it was the Kirby Life recruiting bonuses you paid out or, or it was ads in Indeed or, or social media ads. Uh, we should have invested in a recruiter. We spent our time. Uh, we purchased inventory and finances. Capitalize on your investment. That second week orientation it just solves so many problems, like Rob said before, whether you're on a lead program or, or a team's program, you want to cover those problems before they come up in the field because the new dealers should be focused on excelling at their position and doing a good job getting leads and demos and sales. They shouldn't still be trying to figure it out once they're in the field. And if there's one thing we've learned, and I'm sure everyone would agree, is that new dealers have a selective memory, right? Uh, there's a lot of information we try to teach them in three days and second week orientation, it cures amnesia. It helps them remember, oh, I remember them telling us that week, last week, that this is how pay worked and that there would be some late nights. Uh, but without that reminder course, or maybe you'll find the recruiter accidentally left part of that out uh, through the course of trying to obtain countdown sales, right? So it helps us dot all the I's, cross the, tree, the T's, and it just, it makes the new dealer more excited 
about his opportunity the next day. Look, wouldn't you prefer to deal with that without having to have your team leader deal with it while they're trying to work with everybody else to get sales? It just makes all the sense in the world. And I think if we went back to when Rob and I were selling as distributors, we would never think to not have a second week orientation. You use the word onboarding, and that's exactly what we need is to get these guys prepared for the field. And let me ask you if you could take us through um, a, a quick version, Rob, what did you do as a distributor in your second week orientation? What was the start, middle, and end? What did you do throughout that project? So I, I just think it's incredibly important that the distributor gets organized on the message they want their new people to get. And, and honestly, look at your orientation like it's your son or daughter approaching your business, right? Make sure they have uh, the equipment and the tools that they need to succeed that first week. And how many people could we lose weekly across the, the country that come in that could have been the next Dan Blaylock, right? Could have been the next Matt Rainey, the next Lori Brochet, the next Christy Chawara. You know what I mean? I can go on and on and on, but there, there's a lot of those people that just didn't get something simple answered that very well could have been answered, or it could have been answered the wrong way by a team leader or a dealer counselor, right? And then, you know, all that's that's done, all that, all that work, you right. So yeah. again, it's just a huge way to uh, increase that retention. And I think the bottom line is you will retain more people. Absolutely, you'll retain more people, but it's going to help change their attitude when they're in the field. They're going to understand how they get their leads, whatever program they're on. Uh, they're going to understand promotion. They're going to understand why you, the distributor, want the promotion. Because maybe at their last job, their supervisor didn't want them to get their promotion. We want to see them get their promotion. It's your chance to sell them on the benefits of being a factory distributor so we can retain them throughout their career. You can sell them on the RTS bonuses, the pet payment program. Uh, again, why you wanted to be DTs and why you want to promote them. You can explain the profit protection plan, the inventory protection plan, um, all the Kirby campaigns, the current trip we have uh, to go to Rome. There's so many benefits becoming a distributor. Monday is not only your week to retain them and onboard them, but it's your chance to pitch them the Kirby opportunity. Uh, we appreciate your time. Hopefully all the FDs and the distributor trainees watch this and you use it to grow, grow your business. And Rob, we appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Absolutely. Sell a bunch of Kirby's. We are positive. <laughs>